Hey everybody, this is Joe Pace with Ice Water Yoga, and today we're gonna to talk about the top five yoga poses for your abs and your core. Don't worry so much about the word pose, and don't worry so much about the word abs. Yoga pose is a little bit of a misnomer sometimes, where yoga actually is not necessarily about holding some sort of posture static for a period of time. It can be that, but by pose, I really mean things you're gonna be doing in a yoga class, or things that you can do that are yoga-oriented, and and when it comes to abs, think more about your abs as your core. When we start to expand our view of the core, we actually give ourselves a chance to be stronger throughout our body as opposed to isolating strength. And so really quick, just wanna talk about what your core actually is. There's really four types of abs that you should know about. The first is the rectus abdominis, which runs vertically. You have your external obliques, which run down and in. You have your internal obliques that run up and in. And you have your transverse abdominis which runs horizontally. So ultimately what your abdominals do is they're like a corset to hold everything in one place and really stabilize your spine. So we have vertical, down and in, up and in, and horizontal. So there's a, a network of basically every direction hugging in to protect your spine and also your, your internal organs. But also when we expand the abs into a core, we're thinking about back muscles, okay? So the muscles of the back that also support the spine that run vertically and really bring the whole midsection of the body into one full unit. And then also we have aspects of our core that help our core function and also connect to the spine and for today's class, we're also gonna consider the psoas muscle, which is a muscle that runs vertically, connects to the front of your spine, and then attaches to your femur bone to pull your leg up. So when you lift your knee, that is your psoas. A lot of ab exercises are actually hitting the psoas muscle and not the abs at all. So I wanna differentiate those for you today so you kinda understand the difference. So the first is we're gonna address the frontal core. So for this class, we're going to break things out into the front core, the back core, and the psoas. And we'll start with the front core. The first yoga pose we're going to talk about is plank pose. Very simple, but there's a bunch of variations that you can do in plank pose to make it a little bit more diverse and a little bit more beneficial for your whole core. So we're just a general plank pose. We'll have your legs zipped together. The inseams of the legs are touching and the shoulders are over the wrists. And this is basic plank pose. If you can hold plank pose for about a minute, you're in a really great spot trying not to poke the butt up and which will allow the shoulders to slide back and then also not letting the hips pooch forward and low so that your your shoulders come forward of your wrists really trying to keep a horizontal and straight line from the crown of your head through the back of your heels that's hard, but you can do it. You can draw the heels either side to get a little bit of twisting and bring some of the pose into the external obliques and just obliques in general. You can bring your forearms to the mat if the arms start to get tired. And if you wanna make it a little bit more challenging and a little bit more dynamic, you can walk the feet in for dolphin pose, which makes the pose a lot more challenging on the shoulders, but also makes it a little bit more different and a little bit more challenging in the core. So that's the front core. We often will just do the front core and never really think about the back but having been there and having focused just on the front core and never the back and now having gone through that and now working both of them pretty evenly trust me it is better to do both it just feels so good in your body and you notice that there's just less imbalance and then imbalance generally doesn't feel so good so <laughs> spend time working on your back when you strengthen your back you're giving yourself the opportunity to, to protect yourself from back pain what leads to back pain is when we slouch and when we don't engage our back muscles, we don't have the support system in the back to protect our back. And by making it stronger, we allow our spine to stay vertical, we allow our discs to stay evenly compressed, and therefore staying away from most of the trouble that happens in the back. So the number one pose that I recommend for anybody thinking about doing core work in their back with yoga is locust pose. A really simple one, you'll be on your belly and you have complete contraction here. 
here. This is, there's no leverage. You're not pressing yourself into it. You have your arms by your sides. You have your legs zipped together. And then your chest and legs and hands lift from the floor. You can draw the chest up, maybe lift the legs. All right, and you're breathing here. The crown of the head is drawing forward. You can hug the chin in towards the chest. You don't need to lift the chin towards the ceiling. And this one alone is really one that you could replace every upward facing dog with, every cobra with. You can always be doing locust pose to constantly be strengthening your back. Lower back down. And then a nice counter pose is child's pose for that one. So sliding the hips back. Now I want to sort of demonstrate to you where we start to get confused between working our abs and working our psoas. Boat pose, a lot of times when it comes up in class, people get excited because it's, oh, hey, we're doing ab work, but not completely. If you do this pose, there's a few options. Whenever you do boat pose, most of the pose is in your hip flexor. It's not in your, not as much in your core. It's more here. Okay. So to get into the pose, hands will be behind the knees, shoulders roll down the back, lean back. Okay, so this is technically the pose. From here, if you feel stable, you're resting your weight just above your tailbone on your sacrum. You lean back, your legs come off the floor. If you feel good here, you can take the arms to your side. If you feel good here, you can straighten your legs. If you feel good here, you can take the arms overhead. All right, maybe try it. You'll see how much of this pose is actually in the psoas muscle versus when you do any sort of ab work, you'll also sometimes feel it in the psoas too. When you're doing bicycles, when you're doing seated leg raises, that's mostly psoas work. And it's a good thing to do, but just know what you're doing. Moving into the fourth pose, we can sort of combine boat pose with half boat pose to sort of get the psoas and the, the abs more in a back and forth base. We come into our boat pose. If we we let our chest cave in while straightening the legs. Now we'll notice that it's less here and more here. Okay, so now we've churned boat into a half boat. My shoulder blades are off the ground. My feet are off the ground. My legs are pressing together. I'm bringing it all into the midline. From here, come back to boat. Then you'll notice you're now in the psoas. Into the, into the abs, into the psoas. You can do this with straight arms. Into the abs, into the psoas. That's a hard transition. Finally, the fifth which is by no means a yoga pose. This is a full transition. We're working transition that kind of gets all of these things in its own way. Came up with this a little while ago. I've been doing it for a while myself and I like it because it addresses the core in almost every way that you, you want it to. So it starts with a reverse tabletop. So here we're engaging the back muscles to keep ourselves lifted, but we're also giving ourselves an opportunity to stretch the psoas a little bit. So we, by lifting the hips, you press into the hands, you just spread the collarbones. Step two, you might want to put your hands on blocks for this one. You slide your hips back. And then if you feel comfortable here with your hips behind your arms, you can take it maybe into an L sit. That is very hard. Gets into the hips and the core simultaneously. If your hands are on blocks, makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to lift the feet. You can keep the heels on the mat. From there, you lower. You cave your chest in. Hands come forward. You're working to low boat. So half boat here, breathe here for five breaths, lower the hands, lift the legs, take a few leg raises. So now we're working psoas and abs, lift and lower from here, five on each side coming horizontally. So twisting horizontally to get the obliques and then coming back to half boat. And this one's really hard, arms overhead, rolling half boats, keep the core engaged, just rolling on the back, keep the legs extending, never hinging at the hips. And then you roll forward, plant the feet, lift the hips. Five breaths here, five breaths here, five breaths here, five lifts, five across. And then as many of these as you'd like, five is probably plenty. And then you repeat. So try doing that. It's not easy, but those are five different ways of addressing your core in yoga. We talked about the front core, the back, the psoas, and how they differentiate from each other. You also probably understand now what the abs are and what they're doing for you a little bit better, and also why you should strengthen your back to protect it. Thank you for your time. Let me know how that last one goes, and hope to see you again soon.